Hey y'all, and I hope everybody is having a, a good day. Um, welcome back, and uh, we bet ready to work next week, right? Been working behind the scenes, but I found it. I did a little re research, and I um found a video that very interested me uh, about Alexis Ware. I would never forget Alexis Ware. Now, it's no way nobody can do uh can do a content about a female and not feel, you know, uh, in it, you know, say you can always get, you are capable of saying and keeping awareness of a, Alexis alive over here on its channel, Alexis Square. I remember she disappeared after she dropped her kids out and speed away, but we haven't heard nothing else about it. So I want to take this, uh, 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 Video right here, and I'm going to make my reaction out of it, and I can do that. Okay. Uh, where is Alexis Ware? Alexis Ware has not been found. Nobody is talking about uh, her destination. Uh, what's going on here? Is she alive? I want to keep her spirit alive. Her, her spirit hasn't told me that she is unalive. So I want to keep her uh, awareness out there. Okay. Here we go. This is Alexis. An ambitious person who wasn't afraid to speak out for the people she loved and the things she cared about, which were personality traits which perfectly complemented her go-getter attitude to life that would seem to foreshadow an incredibly successful future. In her teenage years, Alexis also discovered her passion for makeup and quickly decided that she wanted... Okay. Um, uh, this uh, video is for you. Hey. Kating and um, my people in um, commenting and criticism, okay? Purposes, okay? I'm trying to put together uh, allegedly, what allegedly, what could have alleged happened to uh, to Alexis. First of all, Alexis was a bright and, and, and uh, intelligent young lady with a, hit, with a career ahead of her, okay? Okay. Uh, I'm I'm a person. Uh, I'm, I'm you know she I'm, I'm you know that's one thing I can say. She was in hair and makeup. She was on her own business in Atlanta, and uh, we still want to get to the point where we'll make her get away. So we we'll get it to that later. I want to start out right here. Her career matters to her. Her her career and her kids matter to her. That's one thing I can say about it. Okay. To be either a beautician or a hairstylist when she was older with the goal of one day opening her own beauty salon or boutique. However, I think it would be safe to say that there was also another passion in Alexis's life, which undoubtedly took precedent over her aspiring career goals, as she would soon fall in love with her then boyfriend, TJ Patterson. And after the pair began settling down, they eventually had two children together that they were equally determined to build a good life for. According to her family, Alexis was always an incredible mother and took to the role as naturally as you can imagine. However, despite her devotion to the kids, a lingering feeling still remained in the back of her mind about the career that she had once longed for. So, as her children grew older and started attending school, Alexis had finally found herself with some free time on her hands. And so, using her drive and ambition, she would then start to get her career back. Okay, let's go to the free time. How long ago? Okay, every mother, we do what we have to do when the kids are going to school. And, uh, you know, we, we take our time. We go look for a job. We go handle our business and everything. That She was doing like a mother, a motherly job, okay? Back on track by getting her business license and stockpiling merchandise, which she planned to eventually sell in a boutique that she would soon be opening in Atlanta, Georgia in order to be closer to her brother, Travis. However, despite all of the great things that were happening in her life, at some point, the relationship she shared with TJ unfortunately ended for reasons unknown. But despite their differences, the pair refused to let these issues come between the children, and therefore promised to remain amicable going forward. So I think it would be safe to say that during this time... Okay, you can see here in Atlanta that she has her boutique 
you know, it's already set up. It's already ready, good and ready to go. Okay. Uh, at first, I thought, well, maybe she is getting. Maybe she don't want to know. Let you know how you don't want a man to know your location. This is my reaction. This is my opinion. You know um, how you don't want a man. I've been in an abusive relationship, so I'm trying to, you know, say, would she, did she want to get away from him? Uh, um, what what she was trying to do, you know, what, she was trying to start a business. And she, you know, putting stuff in the shop. So she was set, ready, and she was ready to go. So I thought maybe that she was moving her head on, alone, you know. Just don't want a man to know where you are. You know, you don't want nobody to know where your destination is. Uh, and nothing wrong with that, okay? So that's when I came to a point of taking a turn. But when the, we're going to get into something else in a few minutes, okay? So she had a business, uh, ready, set, go, very good. That's most of the cases that we cover over here, dealing with girls and they, young ladies and their career, they are career women. That's why people talk about that. I'm not going to never forget Alexis Ware. Okay. To eventually sell in a boutique that she would soon be opening in Atlanta, Georgia, in order to be closer to her brother, Travis. However, despite all of the great things that were happening in her life, at some point, the relationship she shared with TJ unfortunately ended for reasons unknown. But despite their differences, the pair refused to let these issues come between the children, and therefore promised to remain amicable going forward. So I think it would be safe to say that during this time, there were some huge changes going on in Alexis's life, including a promising social media career. But to add to the mayhem, it wasn't long before Alexis received an approval to break her lease so she could finally make the move to Atlanta and open her store. Okay. Okay, now when it comes to the part to breaking a lease, I have been in a situation before where I broke broke my lease, but Alexis did something very, very uh, safety for her and her kids to me. She she went to she let them know that she broke a lease. When I broke my lease when I was young here in Atlanta, we didn't I didn't tell. The rent office, I believe. I left to get away from a dude that I didn't want to know where I live. Okay. So uh, I got away from him. So uh, I broke the lease and I left without him or nobody over there knowing when I was going to leave. Okay. How I was going to leave. So I thought about Alexis. Alexis broke her lease, but allegedly. It, it, it was alleged, alleged that she went to the rent office and let her know that she was leaving. Now, when you do something like that, you're trying to protect yourself. So uh, I was looking at it at that point. Okay. Within just a few weeks of achieving all of her wildest dreams, Alexis would suddenly start to grow fearful that her life was in danger. Now, it's a that, what, that part, what really kind of got to me when she felt like her, her life would have been in danger. Let's finish hearing some more. Feared that her online presence was attracting unsolicited messages from creepy men that would message her. These okay. These instances would be so scary that she became fearful of uploading any more photos as every new upload would... Now, she was receiving phone calls. She was receiving, you know, on social media... Uh, that's what they, they do. You know, they, uh, I don't know how they got her phone number. That's, that's that part. I don't understand how they got her phone number, but, uh, it was, she was alleged, she, it was alleged, it was alleged that she was receiving phone calls from, from strange people from, uh, her social media page. And I don't know how that worked. Uh, with the phone number. But uh, that is fearful. You know. Be greeted by the same creepy men. That would continue to best her. But this fear would soon evolve. Into pure dread. When Alexis would receive a phone call. From an unknown number. That she would refer to as the devil. But to make matters even worse. After attempting to block the phone number. The same person would continue to call her. Okay. <clears throat> 
unless it's a really receive a uh message from uh an unknown caller and when she blocked the caller the caller called her back but you know people can change numbers and keep bugging you know like that and keep calling you like that so that 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 can happen he can when you block them they can call you from another number it can happen like that okay but you need to ask yourself he he was attracted to her uh and he this person behind the scene was allegedly was going to try to uh follow her they had they had uh they admired her okay as if the blocking had no effect, and this would lead to Alexis experiencing some extremely paranoid thoughts. At this time, she had also started becoming obsessed with zodiac signs, eventually claiming that she could sense danger in her future, and even... Okay, killing. now when it comes to the zodiac sign, y'all, this is part of uh, uh, Pisces, my world. We, we can see, like I told y'all, I'm not a... a, a spiritual reader or nothing like that but i spiritually i can read people and i can so that didn't bother me with uh i understood what Alessa was saying when she said she was a spiritual she's you know seeks that but i never used no kind of measurement with uh my thinking you know my spiritual thinking so but which in Alessa's where case she did use uh imagine it uh you can see right here what they claim alleged that she used uh nah. okay like they said alleged that she used some kind of uh measurement she took a measurement uh using something like this but i didn't do that i i know i used my mind okay actually claiming that she could sense danger in her future and even more chillingly she would warn her family of a dark premonition that a black truck was following her everywhere she went. Now, that she a black truck will follow Alexis where everywhere she went. Should have been a phone call to the uh, the police department. Everywhere she went, she should have made a call to the police department. That I'm I'm riding around and and uh, I don't know what what why did she take that measurement. Uh, uh, call the police and tell them that a black truck. So let's keep in mind that a black truck is following her. Okay, let's let's keep in mind about the black truck. So if the black truck been following Alexis, where she should know, uh, uh, could see in the mirror, uh, did it have a hat on or what? Uh, what kind of truck it was? Okay. He was being, being stalked by somebody. So, due to the dark nature of these claims, her mother, Alberta, was understandably concerned. But despite her attempts to keep her daughter safe, this horrifying prediction would appear to come true on that fateful day in January. On Saturday the 29th of January, Alexis was sitting in her mother's living room as the pair were speaking about her plans for the rest of the week. At the time, Alexis was staying with her mother Alberta in Greenville for the weekend, but was planning on leaving the following day, as on that upcoming Monday, Alexis had set up an appointment at the lottery headquarters in Augusta, Georgia, as she had purchased some lottery tickets and was preparing to turn them in for a big payout. So at first... Okay, let's go back right here. So she sat down with this lady. Hold on, y'all. She sat down. Hold on. I went back to five nine two. Hold on, y'all. I went back too far. <sighs> of the week 
At the time, Alexis was staying with her mother, it. Alberta, in Greenville for the weekend, but was planning on leaving the following day, as on that upcoming Monday, Alexis yes. had... Now, they said that Alexis went into one of these places right here with some lottery tickets. If she went and sat down with some people and won some lottery tickets. See, they said she went and sat down to, with, with someone. And uh, that's a lot of information that y'all didn't know about. We didn't know about. But she, it, on, the, on the video, it alleged she said that she went and sat down at the table. And let me put, by the way, let me put my catcher on here. Uh, so y'all can know. It said Friday day, uh, as on that upcoming Monday, Alexis was going to leave and she went to the lottery place. So if she sat down with some lottery people, usually people take their ticket if they won, if they don't hit the lottery that big. You know what I mean? So they is saying that she went and sat down right here and talked to Pete, you know, to do something. So let's see. Had set up an appointment at the lottery headquarters in Augusta, Georgia, as she had purchased some lottery tickets and was preparing to turn them in for a big payout. See, I didn't know. I didn't know. She knew that. To me, Alexis knew she had a big payoff. She had a big payoff. That's what it says right here. It said was preparing to turn them in for a big payout, but she just came from that office. I don't understand why she acted sitting at the table with this lady right here. And she could have went right there if she wanted. If she hit the lottery, that be it. They would have see if they if, if Alexis had uh uh hold on if Alexis had Alexis where had to hit the lottery, that be it. She would be sitting at the uh she would be sitting at the lottery place right here with the lady at the you seen the video with her sitting at the table. She she had a big lump of sum of money. Like they what they trying to say, then she'll be sitting at that table with that lady. But how she know to go to sit there with that lady, thinking that she had a big long song. But then she went here, okay? She had set that appointment up, okay, with that uh here. I ain't never heard her set no appointment up for no lottery ticket. Never I never heard of that. But each state is different, okay? So usually we'll take out a ticket to the lottery place and go and let them see, oh, did we win big or something like that, okay? So allegedly, she thought she won big, okay? Monday, let's had set up appointment, okay? Listen now. Listen, she thought she won. A lottery headquarters in Augusta, Georgia, as she had purchased some lottery tickets and was preparing to turn them in for a big payout. So at first, everything seemed normal, and Alexis appeared to be somewhat excited for the week ahead. But suddenly, the conversation would take a dark turn as Alexis began okay. saying... Okay, what they didn't tell us was, did she win the lottery or not? They just went by past that. So we don't know if she won the lottery or not. You know what I mean? So did she get a big payout and somebody saw that? You know... Somebody seen her getting a big payout? What was it? You know? Okay. She had a weird feeling that she wouldn't make it to her birthday, her 30th birthday. Okay. I, this is new to me. This is mentally new to me. Uh, how I feel weird. She felt she had a weird feeling that she would make, she wouldn't make it. How would she have a weird feeling that she wouldn't make it? What is it that Alexis Ware knew that know about that we didn't know about? Because she had a career ahead of her. She was trying to leave. What it seemed like a financial money thing that she's running from allegedly. Okay. It it seemed like she is it's something she know that we don't know. Okay, because she said uh the action burden is weird and um Make a 30th birthday. Okay. Action verbs in here, y'all. Okay. This is scary. Okay. To have a weird feeling after you have uh, found your spot in Georgia where you're going to have your, uh, uh, you know, where you got the shot all together. You got good potentials. 
in place. Okay, but for your daughter, I can imagine how the mom feel for for your daughter to tell you that she had a weird feeling that she wouldn't make it to her 30th birthday. I can imagine what that mom was going through. 30th birthday, which was just two months away at the time. Alberta thought this was very out of character because Alexis was somebody who always went all out for her birthdays. Usually she would be making plans months in advance, deciding which outfit to wear and where to hold the celebration. But this now, she... now, now, by the mom said that she used to usually plan a big birthday, maybe since she was in between plans of uh, in between plans of making that move to her business and planning a birthday, plan having enough money to have a big birthday party, maybe that's what she was planning. But for her to say she have a weird feel that she's not going to make it, now y'all have uh, a triangle here on one, on one side of the triangle career and the other side of the triangle uh, party and the other side of the triangle uh, a weird feeling. Physical, mentally, and emotionally. Okay? He hadn't done anything at all, which, of course, played on Alberta's mind. So, rightfully concerned by her daughter's dark thoughts, Alberta then asked her why she was feeling this way. Yeah. But despite her pleas for an answer, Alexis refused to explain any further, stating that she just had a feeling. At this point, Alberta and tried to plead with her daughter some more to stay with her until these worrying thoughts and creepy phone calls stopped. And see, that's what a mother would do. No, you know, you stay right here. Don't you move. You stay here. And um, till we find out, you okay? Well, you know, because of that slater bomb, all these creepy phone calls. And you're not thinking. It seemed like her mind, she had a, chain, a switch of mind. Uh, change in there when she went from oh so excited to have her career ahead of her in Atlanta and then um and be plan on moving remember she said she was gonna move and then right here then the mind switch to weirdness in uh phone calls and all of that so you got two sides of, that you're working with you the good the career side then you're talking about the uh the, the dark side okay and that will make a mother worry. But against her mother's wishes, Alexis decided to leave anyway, determined to carry out her plans. So on that Sunday around midday, Alexis did her hair and makeup and got ready to leave, convincing her mother one last time that she was feeling better and that she would be fine. Now, so without... oh, listen, listen. Mentally. She feeling better, better, and she feeling fine the next day. Maybe Alexa was going through some kind of emotional stress that the day that other day she was stressed out with so much on her mind. Because the next day she told her mom she was feeling fine, y'all. That's a mental change. That's a, a mental change there, a mental attitude, a, me a mental feel, the emotional feeling. So that means that something was on her mind. All that stress, she was stressed out, doing too much. And we don't know how she's going to do it, stressed on this side. And then next day, she feeling fine. She feeling better. That's what it said here, allegedly, okay? It's any real choice in the matter. Alberta said her goodbyes to her daughter as she walked out of the door and wished her a safe drive home. But it wouldn't be long before Alberta's worst fears would soon come true. On Sunday the 30th of January, Alexis arrived home safely not too long after leaving her mother's house and greeted her children before she began to unpack some of her belongings. She then sat down on the bed and decided to have a nap as she knew she had a big week ahead. But just as she was drifting off into a deep sleep, her phone started ringing at around 3pm as her mother Alberta was checking in to see if she had got home safe and was feeling any better. Alexis answered right away, and the conversation was certainly more positive than the previous day. But there were still some red flags. Listen, listen. She feeling a little better from the other day, the day before. 
but uh the previous day they said the pre previous day but there was still some red flags at that for her let's see because she took a nap let's see what is on alexis mind okay bags appearing in the way alexis was speaking the same sense of fear was still present in her voice and those strange dark thoughts of not making it to her 30th birthday were seemingly still there in the back of her mind as the you okay why is she she it seemed like the birthday not making it uh for her 30th birthday seemed like still in it uh, that she's not going to make her 30th birthday is the key. Why she thinks she's not going to make it to her 30th birthday. As if someone said. Uh, if you don't do this before your 30th birthday, you won't be here. That's what it sounds like, y'all. Okay, these are my re reaction in my opinion. Usually upbeat young woman was acting as if she was almost a shadow of her former self. But after an unknown amount of time, the phone call eventually ended with the mother and daughter promising to speak again the following day as they normally did, and then Alexis attempted to go back to her nap. However, it wouldn't be too much longer before Alberta would receive another phone call, which would turn her mild concern into a living nightmare, as at approximately 7.30pm later that day, her daughter's ex-boyfriend, TJ, would let her know that Alexis had been acting very strange. The conversation started with TJ asking Alberta if she had spoken to Alexis that day, and given that she had, Alberta then responded by confirming that they had seen each other that very morning, and also on FaceTime at around 3pm. He then went on to explain that during that afternoon, Alexis had actually contacted him to organise a meet-up at a gas station in Anderson County, which was located around 40 minutes from her home, so she could hand their two kids off to him for a few days. The request was strange and very out of the blue, but given that Alexis was usually a very competent mother, he assumed that there was probably a good reason for this, and therefore agreed to meet her later that day to complete the exchange. So at approximately 7pm that evening... Okay. She gave you the kids, and you... Okay, we're gonna go back. Not what what nobody else said in the in the past, or what they said in the future. She gave him the kids. Just going by what they said on video, she gave him the kids, and she like why she why he trying to say she acting weird because she don't want to talk to him because she don't want to be bothered right now. That's what it sounds like. She don't she don't want to be bothered. She gave you the kids, so uh, take care of the kids for her, okay. Okay. Alexis arrived at the 7-Eleven gas station on Highway 29 in her red 2019 Honda Accord, and she was captured on surveillance footage speaking with TJ as the children climbed into their father's okay. vehicle. So the civilian cam uh, camera did catch her, ca capture her speaking to her children father, okay? Um... They get climbing to the father car, and the in the in the video in the camera called it. So the camera called it. So the camera seen that what was happening that Alexis where did get inside her kids did get inside of the car. Okay. Forget about what was put out there, and the speculation and the theories from uh, the creators. Let's listen to what they're saying here. Okay. TJ then helped Alexis pay for some gas as she was running low at the time. And then the two shared a short conversation. Now, just because, let me tell y'all something. My reaction, just because she asked him to put gas in her car, doesn't mean that she didn't have no gas. Now, I asked my baby father for gas money just to fill my car up. God, I didn't want to touch this money. Uh... That ain't that don't mean that she didn't have no money. She just asked him to fill his car, her car up with gas. What we in the woman with, with children, you know, we ask uh, the baby daddy do because they know they have some money. 
Fill my car up for me, baby. And that's what she's supposed to do. That's what she can do. Let's say not supposed to do. That's what she can do. Okay? So nothing suspicious about her asking him to fill her car up, y'all. We guess nothing. Let's not make a big suspicious thing out of that, okay? ...into their separate vehicles. TJ then explained to Alberta on the phone that during this gas station conversation, they had both agreed to drive over to TJ's mother's house, with Alexis claiming that she would be driving back over to her own mother's house. But that don't make sense. That don't make sense. Why would she get put the kids in his car just to go to her mom, his mama's house? And she told him that she 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 would be driving back to her 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 own mother's house. So I can see Alexis say, "Well, I'll see you later. Go on, TJ. Go on to your mother's house. Why 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 would she meet you to get give you the kids and to waste her gas to go down to your mother's house?" Come on, that ain't making sense. Why would she do that? Okay, she told him what she wanted him to hear, that she was going to go down to her mother's house. She did not want this man to know where she was going, but he trusted, He knew she knew that he wouldn't hurt the kids. Okay? Now she could have left the kids down to her mother's house. We don't know her plans. Okay? So... She don't want him to know where he, where he's, where she, where she going. Maybe she want him to get away. You heard up moving fast. She was moving fast. She didn't want him to know where she was going. Nothing wrong with that. She's making her moves. Afterwards, however, as both cars approached a set of traffic lights, Alexis suddenly shot around him with a high rate of speed and made a right hand turn at the red light and took off from there. Well, in response, Alberta was more than shocked to hear this news, as Alexis had made no such plans with her, given that they had already spent the entire weekend together. So this was when her skepticism in the story started to arise, but it would seem that the concern she had for her daughter's safety would severely outweigh her suspicions, as rather than scolding TJ, she instead thanked him for the update and quickly hung up the phone, desperate to see if she could get in touch with Alexis. Alberta then tried calling Alexis herself, but the phone call went straight to voicemail, meaning that her phone was either turned off at the time or it was set to a mode where Alexis was unable to receive phone calls. Alexis did not want TJ, the baby daddy, let's say the baby daddy, to know where she was going. She do not want her mama to be worried about her. Remember now, she's 29 years old now. She a grown woman. She took them children to their dad's house, even though one of them not his child. But he, she don't want to bother her mom. She don't want to worry her mother, allegedly. I'm just putting myself into being 29. She didn't want uh, 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 TJ upset because Alexis, he's upset because Alexis didn't want him to know where she was headed and where she was going. She don't, she don't, she, she. Alleged, she allegedly don't feel she fear him. It's it's uh, it's something right there on her mind. She don't want to know where she was going. I don't blame her. So the concern that Alberta had for her daughter only increased with each failed attempt to get in touch. However, there was one more glimmer of hope, as Alberta knew Alexis was scheduled to visit the lottery headquarters in Augusta, Georgia, on the following day. So she quietly held out hope that it would only be a matter of time before Alexis would turn her phone back on and get in touch with her family. But in yet another cruel twist of fate, Monday would soon come, and to everybody's shock, Alexis would fail to show up for her scheduled appointment. Strange how this video told us that she did make it to her appointment, didn't it? So y'all go back to the beginning of the video. It told us that she made it to her appointment, right? But right here, they think that she didn't make it to her appointment. So did she mentally make it like she said it? They said she did at the beginning. Or she just didn't want her mother to know that she made it to, to the uh, place. Okay? Maybe Alyssa's protecting herself. It's in 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 she might not want to know where she is. 
at this time, you know, at this time. On Tuesday the 1st of February, Alberta would finally reach her wick's end as she was forced to accept the brutal reality of the situation and realized that she had no other option than to officially report Alexis as missing to the Anderson County Sheriff's Department. So given the mysterious circumstances surrounding her disappearance, the police quickly jumped into action, sending officers out to her last known location to see if they could gather any useful evidence. Sooner or later, they arrived on the scene and began interviewing the gas station attendants to find out who was working on that Sunday night so they could ask them questions about what happened. They then also requested a copy of the surveillance footage from that night to see if there was any suspicious activity which would lead to any cause for concern. The next day, a police officer named Jeff Finley from Anderson County Sheriff's criminal investigation team revealed that the camera was able to catch both TJ and Alexis at the gas station at around 7pm just as TJ had said, and to their surprise, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Unfortunately, a lot of the video was actually blocked by a tractor trailer that had come into view, but despite the obstruction, you could still clearly see that there didn't appear to be any struggle of any kind. The two had indeed shared a conversation, and TJ was also helpful in paying for her gas, as explained to Alberta. So the question then became, why did Alexis suddenly decide to speed off at the traffic lights? Well, in search for the answer, the police then tracked down the surveillance footage at the lights to see if this was true. But once again, they were able to confirm TJ's statements, as Alexis really had sped off just like he said. So what? In fact, everything that TJ Patterson said was backed up by evidence. But so, so what? She don't want a woman, sometimes a woman don't want a man to know where they're going. She don't want him to know. She, she... She probably could love, you could love a person and fear for them at the same time, y'all. But it's not the love that you think it is. It's the part, it's the the, the plan and, and what I have to play to get away from what I was uh, trying to do. So, okay. TJ, she got away. All right. Including his alibi for where he was after the gas station meetup. So very quickly it became clear that the father of Alexis's children was not responsible for her disappearance. So with this in mind, the police began searching security for... Okay, we, we do... Okay, he's not responsible. The reason why they're saying he's not responsible, y'all, is because she got away from him. Okay, that's why. That's the only reason why they uh, he's allegedly not responsible, because he is not... He is not responsible for her, you know, you know, to leave and doing what she want to do because she a grown full woman at 29. OK, she can do what she want to do. OK, all right. We know that part. Footage in the local areas to see if they could spot Alexis or her red Honda Accord. But at first, they wouldn't have much luck. According to Alexis's stepfather, Frank, the police had made all types of efforts to find out where she may have gone to but every lead seemed to come up empty. However, just a few days later, a tip would come in from a neighboring police department that would seem to change everything. On Wednesday the 2nd of February, a red 2019 Honda Accord was found abandoned along a dirt road in a heavily wooded area in McCormick County. Okay, that's what we need to talk about. Let's take it back. Let's refresh. We're going to go back, not what we learned in the past. Okay, now they found February, they, like they said, that, a, that her car, this Honda, the 2019 Honda Accord was found, abandoned along a dirt road. Okay. Alexis could have got out of this car and got into another car and left. Okay. She could have got in this car. She could have got out of this car and into another car and left. It could have been a part of her plan. Okay? It's, it's nothing suspicious about that. It's just the way she, 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 the way it alleged happened like this. Okay? A road in a heavily wooded area in McCormick County, which was located she about had an hour's car. drive from the gas station. Apparently, the property owner had spotted it the day before, but as it was logging season at the time, he just assumed it had belonged to one of the workers. 
But after the vehicle didn't move once the workers had finished for the day, the property owner's suspicions increased, leading him to call the police to report it. He also mentioned that the way the vehicle was parked seemed like it was trying to be hidden, which worried him that That's it what may I'm have saying. been related See, to some he's saying the same thing I said. He was she, whoever it was, she 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 hid the car. The car was hidden. The, 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 whatever it is, it seemed like it's a plan to get away and, and y'all not supposed to find her allegedly. Okay. Let's do it this way. Uh, let's do it that way. And then y'all, cause she left there. She went where she had to go. Okay. When she in the car, she, she had to know where she was going. Okay. So you don't know what the plan was. No activity. So that very same day, officers from both McCormick County and Anderson County were then sent out to the location to see if they could find any further evidence that may have led them to discovering Alexis. And immediately upon arrival, they noticed a black hair bonnet on the ground next to the vehicle. They then opened up the doors of the car and found Alexis's cell phone, her purse, a bag of clothes in the trunk, and also a set of lottery tickets that likely belonged to her. So now, you come on, y'all. They found, listen this, all the things that they found right here, all the things that they found in her car, if she took the phone with her, it would have been everywhere she went. Okay. Allegedly, now, the way that that, that bunny was on the ground, why it can you had to ask yourself why why is it on the ground? You don't know if it a hey, if it seemed like somebody staged that. The reason why it seemed like somebody staged that because the thought the thought process that I'm getting. Okay, I'm gonna leave the phone. I'm gonna leave my purse in here. Uh, I don't want nothing in that person no way. So they uh, I'm gonna leave my phone. I'm gonna leave my purse. Uh, that money that they make them think that this and that somebody have a thought process. The reason why they y'all think that she got the fighting that don't mean that she had a struggle. That they staged it could have been staged like this, okay? Who the person who behind the scene could have staged it like this? That's what it seemed like a stage. Unfound Alexis's cell phone her purse, a bag of clothes in the trunk, and also a set of lottery tickets that likely belonged to her. So as you can imagine, after uncovering these incredibly suspicious clues, it was then that the police began to seriously consider the possibility that foul play may have been involved. But okay. refusing... It either foul play is involved... Come on, police now. Come on, officer. Uh, foul play is not in... Involved. Y'all said the officer said that foul play may have been involved. Now just say whether or not that was foul play or not. Tell us whether there it was foul play. Usually a uh, 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 officer or police can say it was foul play. They don't put no news out there that foul play may have been involved, but refusing to. No, you can't say, you can't lead a, a family out there with a may have been. You're an officer, so you'll know that a foul play has occurred or not. So that don't make sense on that part right there. You're either a foul play or not a, a foul play or not may have been, okay? To miss any key details, the police then sent in the crime scene investigators to conduct another thorough examination of the vehicle to search for any potential fingerprints or stains that may have led to a suspect. And then soon enough, they successfully found some prints underneath a patch of mud, which they quickly sent back. Look at this. Look, look what they found. See, y'all said they ain't found no fitting fingerprint. That's why I said they forget about what was what was said in the past and look at the future. They found some prints underneath a patch of mud, which they quickly sent out. Let's see, let's see who the, the prints gonna belong to. Back to the forensic lab for testing. So as the investigators awaited the results of the lab tests, they decided to start a widespread search surrounding the area where the car was discovered, sending several Okay. They didn't tell us about uh, 
They didn't tell us about the uh, fingerprints, okay? They didn't mention nothing about the fingerprints. They start searching. For them not to tell us what, why they didn't mention nothing about the fingerprints. No information. That's why there was speculation because they were trying to help find out what could have happened to uh, allegedly, allegedly happened to uh, to uh, Alexis Ware. Now, unfortunately, this is all we know about the case for now. But to this day, over two years on from the day of her disappearance, Alexis has still not been forgotten by her family, and they continue to share her story on social media every chance they get. In fact, I was personally only just made aware of this case recently by the Black and Missing Foundation, who alerted the public to her story on the second anniversary of her disappearance. So it would seem that her case is still very much in the public eye, meaning it's only a matter of time before we find out the truth. However, with Alexis being missing now for over two years, I fear we have to accept the reality that with each month that has passed, the probability of her safe return has only grown more and more unlikely. So with that, let's I'm get... not going to say unlikely. I'm not going I'm not I'm going to say unlikely. I'm going to say if something keep telling me that uh she's has alive and safe. Something is telling me that she's alive and safe. Where I don't know. But I did think that this girl, young lady is alive. Where? I don't know, y'all. But deep down in my heart, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, I, I she's alive somewhere. I don't feel like she gone from us. My spirit has not yet, had never taken me away from Alexis. No. And he said safe return. It's only grown more and more unlikely. So with that, less. No, it's not to me. Why do you want us to forget about it? Why do you want us to forget about her? Why do you want us to forget about all of this? Now, is she all right? It's okay. As long as the family knows. Okay? But deep down in my heart, hopefully, that she's okay. Deep in my heart, I feel like she's fine. And she's out there somewhere. I love y'all. This is my opinion. This is my theory. Y'all like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'm out.